right? Shalom, this is the brother Raya brother Amawag. of GMS New Orleans coming at you with another lesson. But before we get started, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who ruled and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiam out there. Pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe, may you brothers endure until the end, and to the few sincere Akwat out there diligently learning in silence. Shalom. Shalom. And with this lesson, we're just going to go into the fact that these prophecies, hey, they're speaking. They've been speaking. And hey, the men of the Lord have been speaking them, but we're actually seeing in the mainstream news that people might as well be quoting biblical prophecy and scriptures with the way things are going down. I mentioned in a few previous videos I've done dealing with this whole Middle Eastern situation that you've got average everyday people, you know, in alternative news like Canadian Prepper, for instance, he was referring to Russia as Gog and he was saying, hey, we he's using terms like the apocalypse, Armageddon biblical times and it's not just him but other people and then the brother i believe up in uh, michigan his page is a uh, bonza ab he uh did a video where uh, some you know some jake instagram influencer po made a post saying but real talk we are living in biblical times and he was just going into the comments on the video and it was pretty much a 50 50 split on some that were you know one person said we're the Israelites in those quotes, but other people are saying, oh, better prepare for Jesus. Some P Jake's trying to put scriptures that kind of, you know, went with some of the things we're saying. Then you had other Jake's that are just like, oh, they've been saying that since the 50s or, you know, all, all the bullshit we hear Jake saying. But regardless, these prophecies have been prophesied in the scriptures to take place. And we're in the time of them taking place to where... It's going to be to the point to where we no longer there's going to be no more need in going out and prophesying the word because what we're saying is going to be happening God. and once that's the case that's that's time for yahweh by hashem yahweh shy to work and the action to take place that's a beautiful point because the word prophesy means to say before so you can't prophesy while it's happening like we right now we're at a time of, of heralding yahweh shy second coming and warning our people of jacob's trouble World War Three, all of these things in the scriptures, but as they're happening, we're not going to be on the highways and hedges, man. We had uh, one of the brothers on the other side was asking us, "Are we we're going to be out here? All these things are going?" To... No, no, we're not. We're not. Apparat is out. We're going to be nowhere near you people when the judgment is actually coming down. But I have a real quick one for you. Oh, God, God. This is uh, Habakkuk chapter two, verse. I started two. It says, "And Yahweh answered me and said." So you started verse one. God, God. Uh, Habakkuk two and one. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And we'll watch to see what he will say unto me. And it backs up what you just said. What the prophesy means to say before. And we're the watchmen. We've been standing upon our watch. You know, watching for danger. And blowing that trumpet as it comes. To give people a, a warning of what's coming. What's to come before the, you know, the attack, so to speak, takes place. And that's these prophecies. Saying, well, it's about to go into it in verse 2. Okay, it says, and, I, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. And that's what we're doing. We're writing the vision and making it plain upon tables. And we're watching the news and reading the scriptures. And we're filtering the news through the scriptures to do what? Go out onto the highways and byways to preach this word, as well as do video epistles like this, that he may run that readeth it. The elect hear the message and what? They get right with their power and know what times they're living in. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And though the vision is for an, uh, is for an appointed time, it will speak and, and, you know, not tarry. And we're in the times where it's no longer tarrying. I remember uh, it was when I, you know, I first come into doing the work. This was around that time that it was when Donald Trump was president. And he did that uh, missile strike on Syria. You know, I was excited. I didn't quite understand that, you know, the, the MOTB had to be mandatorily implemented before, you know, the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat in World War III really kicked off. So I was, you know, doing videos and excited about it. And I remember some Edomite commented on the video. and was like, oh, silly Negro. And, you know, that it, even though we were in the, even though the prophecies hey, were in the process of taking place, they were for an appointed time. And though they were tarrying, what? 
fast forward, you know, a couple of years later, hey, they're no longer Tarion. It's getting to the point to where, you know, with that Syrian strike, yeah, it was serious, but it ain't like it is now where you're talking about Iran directly getting involved against Israel, Russia talking about getting involved, Russia talking about using nukes, yeah. Saudi Arabia is, is you know, taking the side of the Palestinians and the, and the Arabs or the Ishmaelites, you know, against the U.S. and Israel. Hey, this is things that have never been seen before, you know, taking place as we speak. And now the action, hey, the action is quickly coming upon us. So it would behoove you, you know, you Jakes, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to take heed to the word right now. Because with all these prophecies taking place of, you know, World War III and the destruction, what other prophecy is involved? The fame of the word yeah. to where you're no longer going to be able to get this word. And whatever knowledge, wisdom, and understanding you were able to get while the word was freely available is what's going to get you during Jacob's trouble and be your stability. But yeah. if you haven't been taking heed to the word and, you know, you've just been bullshitting and being in that spirit of, oh, They've been saying that since my grandparents. You're going to get caught out there, and you're going to get the full force of judgment, kind of and like rightfully it. so. Got that real quick to back here. Kind it's Isaiah 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Point blank period. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. So if okay. you don't have the wisdom and knowledge, what does that mean? You're not going to be stable. You Just imagine just total blackness and darkness in the streets the, the electric grids have been completely taken off there's no food in the shelves there's no trucks coming in and out of the cities bringing food everybody's panicking people are getting put to death left and right and you have no knowledge of the scriptures you don't know why these things are happening you don't know what's coming next you just see people dying everywhere you see people screaming for fema you see the so-called white man on the news who, who is the cause of all this presenting himself as offering a solution you're, you're gonna lose it man if you don't have the, this, if you don't have the, the understanding of this, not just the physical Bible, but the wisdom and knowledge that's contained in the scriptures, which is only being taught by holy men, in that day, it's, it's a wrap for you. You're going to lose your mind. How am I going to feed my baby? What am I going to do? You know, Jake, they show you in all these, uh, these so-called post-apocalyptic movies, you have people that die in horrific fashions, and then you have people that also die from just simple things like they might get a cut and they, they can't get access to penicillin or they can't you know, just get an aspirin. They can't go to the store and get something that's that's readily available right now, and they just die a painful death. That's gonna happen mm -hmm. to a lot of people. You got it. Right? Hey, I can't imagine. You know, you know, you try to try to at least maybe I maybe it's just me. Whenever you see people that are scared out here about these times, I try to speculate. What would the, what would what would your mindset be? Say you don't believe in a god or a higher power, but yeah. you just see the world going to shit. You think that this life is it, like. Yeah. You live, you die, and then it's blackness afterwards. You'd be fucking terrified out there. Yeah. And you would be willing to do anything to, you know, get in that sense of comfort. Yeah. And that's how that devil wants it, bringing that order out of chaos. And when you don't have that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, hence, as the brother was going into, you won't have that stability. So you'll be taking any little thing to get back into a, a semblance of normalcy. But, hey, that's going to lead to your destruction anyway. It's a catch-22. You get that karagma. You get that nuclear fire. Yeah, that's another beautiful point you just made because this ministry is actually preparing us to face sudden death. Now the scriptures tell you that you know there are a lot of brothers that aren't going to see death, and certain brothers are going to be martyrs. But either way, we're prepared to face death. These people love their life in this world. We already feel dead. All right, we're dead in Hamashiach Yahushai, and we're we're dead to this world, and we're alive through through our hope and Yahushai's second coming. So. For us to, to already be ready to die, we're not going to be put in uh, situations in which we're going to be desperate to do anything to prolong our lives here because we're already ready for our lives here to end. We're ready for our life in the kingdom. I got a precept to back you up huh. and just to you know, back up what the brother was saying. We go through these calamities, you know, losing, losing things you care about, things not going your way to prepare you for Jacob's trouble, to make you hate your life, to make you be in that spirit of, look, I want it to go down. I know it's going to be bad, but shit, anything is better than being a slave, having to wake up at, at four in the morning to go work some, you know, bullshit job you don't make money on, deal with people that look at you as a second class citizen, all that. But this is a Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb 
and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. God. And that's that's really what this ministry prepares you for, to not love your life unto death. You know, brothers lose their family members. That's a blessing in disguise. That's one less thing you have to worry about during Jacob's trouble. Brothers have women problems. That's a blessing in disguise. That's one less thing you're not, you're not going to have to go back and get your stuff. All right? So, you know, brothers, you know, lose a job. But we're not going to have jobs in Jacob's trouble anyway. Like the, All of these things that the Most High takes from us when we start to serve him, those are things that you would have lost anyway. So your your mind is already prepared for the kingdom. These people who are, uh, that's why how should I say, what, woe unto them that laugh now, you shall cry later. Those that mourn now are going to laugh later. Though, these people that, that are uh, living high, high off the hog, there's somebody in the society, they have all these these trinkets and things to lose. When all hell breaks loose, they're, they're going to be completely bugged out because they actually care about this world. If you care about the world and the world is being destroyed, that's going to completely mess up your mental state. But if you look forward to America being destroyed, these things that, that are coming that are clearly written in prophecies, when they happen, you're going to celebrate. We're going to actually enjoy watching, you know, uh, various T attacks and buildings exploding. People look like it, it sounds crazy. You know, if you don't understand the prophecies, like how could they how could they celebrate mass death? We celebrate mass death because that's one of the final prophecies before America's finally destroyed, man. And we're going to be free, free in rulership at the spiritual powers. Yep. And, and, you know, be the ones calling the shots. Yeah, living in a world of righteousness. That's another thing we look forward to. We we uh, lust for righteousness, like the brother Quab just went into. Uh, lust, it's just a strong desire. We lust for a kingdom where righteous judgment goes forth. That doesn't happen here. So even aside from Jake dealing with poverty issues uh, or whatever type of financial issues, women issues, family issues, whatever's going on, the, the real thing here is there's no righteousness here. Righteous judgment does not go forth in America. And it's, when America is destroyed, there's going to be a righteous earth that replaces this place. And that, that hope is, is worth anything that we're about to go through. And really, a lot of your issues you deal with and a lot of your heartache, where does it stem from? Living in an unrighteous world. Yeah. You get, you, you, you're living in poverty. Why is that? Because Esau screws over everybody, yeah. especially Jake. Usury. Usury, you know. Esau will tell you one thing before you get the job and then pull the rug from under you and you're getting it, it's never a straight shot with this guy it, woman issues you're dealing with the woman you know she more often than not she's not a virgin when you deal with her and she's got that feminist mindset so that brings heartache you know the food breaks down your body and messes with your mental health this is all this all stems from living in an unrighteous wicked world so when we live in a righteous world governed by the law, statutes, and commandments, all these issues will be, you know, a thing of the past. Right. If, if wickedness is the root of all these problems, then what's the solution? The solution is righteousness. But you can't tell people in the world that. You got these red pill niggas, they'll complain about women all day, but they, they don't believe in the law, statutes, and commandments. You got these uh, economic people talking about Bitcoin and crypto and all these things, or the Federal Reserve, this and that, but they don't believe in the law, statutes, and commandments either. You got people that, that are complaining about the food. Oh, you got to go vegan. Oh, there's there's pesticides being sprayed in the vegetables. So you got to go organic. You got all of these people that are complaining about the, they don't keep the dietary law. They don't, none of these people that are, that are complaining about the problems of society will tell you that the solutions are to keep the commandments of the Most High and to have his children ruling the earth in righteousness. The Israelites being put back in power is the only thing that's going to fix everything. But nobody wants to talk about that except for us. We're the only people talking about the, the house of David, the kingdom of heaven. Peace, right. peace, true world peace, which is going to come from the, the 12 tribes of Israel returning to Jerusalem. You, you never hear Jewish people talk about, hey, we now that we're back in the land, we should keep the commandments. We should teach the Torah to the nations, to the Goyim. You, you never hear them say that, man. It's only us talking about that. They're too busy, what, uh, running Hollywood, running the porn industry, you know. Running in pride parades. The pride parade, the banking industry, yeah. using that usury and screwing you over and bringing in this 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 karagma. Yeah. They're too busy, you know, set on wickedness. But, uh, you know, actually, if you could, we'll get a uh, Second Peter chapter 3, read verses 2, shit, 13. Because <laughs> that, you know, this Second Peter's chapter 3 encompasses a lot of things that the Most High is not slack concerning the prophecies. And you got the scoffers out here saying that we've heard that from the past mm -hmm. and what not to care about the things of this world because we always go into it. Abaratazah, you know, uh, this brother and myself, you know, the other, the other sincere Akim and Akwat out there of that number, we aren't even bringing these bodies, this skin and flesh on the chariots when we go on to them. 
So how much less this stuff you're concerned with, the car, the house, the FRN notes, all that shit's gonna be destroyed. You gotta be in the mindset that, you know, your loved ones that you're dealing with now, hey, there's a good chance they're gonna be destroyed. So if that's the case, you should be concerned about doing what's right to uh, doing what's right for Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, which gives you a chance at being saved and also gives you know your loved ones a chance at being saved. Yeah, because a lot of our loved ones, most of them are going to die, but a lot of them are going to be saved. There's a whole lot of Israelites outside the 144,000. All right, uh, John the Revelator saw. He said he saw a great multitude. So the one third being saved, it's not just the prophets. All right, it's also uh, certain friends of the prophets, family members, people that are under our headship. There, there's going to be a mass deliverance, and I, that's another thing that keeps us going. When you see mass death, which right now it, it really hasn't even gotten that bad yet. All right, over here, it's, mm -hmm. on the other side of the world, they're already going through their hell. But right here, man, Jake, Jake you know, lose a job or lose a one, but you, you're not, you don't have martial law troops putting bayonets in your face. It's not that serious yet. But when it gets that serious, you're gonna have to have your mind on something better. You're gonna have to have that hope in your mind. Otherwise, you're gonna lose it. When a man loses hope, it's just he'll do anything. There's nothing left. Yeah. Yeah. Hope, you know, hope can, is tied to your integrity. Yeah. You keep your integrity because you have hope that what you believe in is going to be accomplished. Okay. But once you lose hope in that, and you don't have hope if you don't have this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you're ready to sell yourself out like a prostitute yeah. to the to the John with the most money. <laughs> yeah. And that, those Maccabees brothers, they, uh, they had hope that they would come back and, and receive a reward for their integrity. We, we feel the same way. We're in the same spirit. That's why every brother loves that chapter, man. Second like Maccabees seven. That's just like, like yeah. If I if I if I hold fast to what's been given to me, there's a reward for this. Esau doesn't have that. Esau now knows that he's Esau, so <laughs> he's gonna come down with that sword like a maniac. And Jake has no clue what's coming, man. He got nothing else to do. He, I like I like to think about that too. If you know, if I were an Edomite, what and I, you know somehow i was convicted in my spirit that i'm an edomite yeah. i'm going into slavery i'm going to get destroyed that would make you have a hate for jake even that much more yeah. it's like if i'm if this is my last hurrah i'm about to i'm about to show my red ass God. and and you know be the the biggest wickedest devil out here yeah look look how oh, look at the way esau treated jake when he thought he was a christian these so-called white people that believed in christianity look, they were hanging jake's castrating jake just doing the most splitting, splitting Jacob with horses, tying them different uh, ligaments of their body to, to horses, and they were they were torturing Jake on a level that is unheard of. There's no other nation that's gone through what our people have gone through, and he was doing all of this when he believed in so-called heaven and white Jesus and being a good Christian. He was a complete devil while he believed somewhat in the Bible. So once that hope is removed, once you know you're an Edomite, you know this is your last. Hoorah, this is the last time you're ever going to be free. This is the last time you're ever going to get to kill Jake. Man, he's going to lose it, man. He's going to he's going to show you that he is the devil that the Bible speaks of. And that's another final prophecy, Revelation 12 and 12, him coming down with great wrath because he knows he has a short time. And that's when that happens, again, we're not going to be on the streets warning you, Jakes. Are you you Eves walking with your zaddy? Oh, you shouldn't do it. Man, in that day, you're going to get eight, man. You're going to be lunch. But, uh, this is 2 uh, Peter chapter 3. Verse 9, it says... Oh, you start verse 2. Oh, 2? Kind of, kind of. And we'll read down to 13, you know, if you got any precepts or points you want to bring in. Kind of, kind of. This is Second Ezra, uh, Second like Peter, chapter 3, verse 2. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Hey, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. As it says in Second Esther chapter nine, hey, these things that have been spoken before thee from the beginning, we had the prophets in the past prophesying these things. They prophesied events that took place during their times, before their times. Like look at Jeremiah with the Babylonians; he was prophesying to the southern kingdom that Nebuchadnezzar was going to come in and take him down. And what Jake back then didn't believe it. Hey, we have that example, and he was prophesying about, and him and other prophets were prophesying, you know, about the things today. You know, the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, World War Three, though they were thousands of years away from it. But now, and hey, the prophets are back through the reincarnation. They're living in the times of those prophecies, speaking of the things that were spoken before by the holy prophets, you know, by themselves. And, you know, some Jakes are getting it like they did back then. And some Jakes are not getting it and refuse to get it as it's about to go into making every excuse under the sun to really do what they don't want to get right. 
they want to continue to commit adultery they want to continue to eat pork. eat pork revel in black culture shit at the job the other day you know a little tangent uh one of the people was talking about one of the jakes walked in it's like oh it smells like uh smells like uh gumbo in here and one of the persons like oh yeah yeah that's one of the things we're making and even this eve one of the people said but you know some people some people don't eat pork like that and this jake his eyes lit up he's like well, you know how we get down in louisiana pork chops jambalaya you know pork sandwich all that shit and i was hearing the conversation in my head and i was just thinking nigga i want you to die yeah. and i'm gonna enjoy i'm gonna enjoy the thought of you dying yeah and a, a morbidly obese fat that i used to work with like maybe five years ago he <laughs> we, we had this conversation that he uh i, I didn't tell him he, I, I didn't go into the truth, obviously, but we were just talking, and he's like, he's morbidly obese. I'm like, yo, what, what if your doctor told you that uh, if you keep eating pork, you're gonna die? He looked at me. He said, Uptown, that's what they call me. He's like, Uptown, I'm gonna die eating pork. He's, the, I'm like, you got a child, but you love eating pork so much that if, even if a doctor told you, hey, if you keep eating pork, you're gonna die, he's still gonna eat pork. That's that goes back to that Isaiah where it says, I got it. Oh, come on, come on. Hey, he spoke it. He spoke it. He prophesied of his own death. Yeah. This is Isaiah 66, verse 17. That's it. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith Yahweh. Man, Jake doesn't know what to do with that precept. Like, because they always ask, oh, the Lord's going to kill me for eating pork? Yes, we, he just read it. The Lord's going to come back and kill you for eating pork. It's that serious. Our, our forefathers, they would rather die than be seen eating fake pork. All right? Look, look just eat this. Don't, you don't have to eat actual pork. Just eat this fake pork to make it look like, nah, I'd rather die. That's the level of integrity that, that Eleazar had. He, he'd rather get put to death than even make it look like he's eating pork. And fast forward to today, <laughs> Jake said, I'll die for eating pork. You gotta. And what was his integrity? His hope just like the brother, the seven brothers of the Maccabees that look, yeah. even though we suffer now, hey, we're going to come back. We're Israelites. We have hope in, in you know, the promises of our forefathers that we are the children of Israel and we're going to come back into the kingdom in righteousness. And they prophesied against Antiochus saying, but you wicked man, you have no hope of the resurrection because you know you're a goddamn Edomite God. and you're just coming back into slavery. And Eleazar, he had his integrity because, you know, he had hope in what he believed in as well and stood on his stood stood ten toes down knowing that look people look up to me you know i i have the i'm a i'm an elder what what kind of message would that send what kind of you know feeble spirit would that put on you know the 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 youth if in my old age with my reputation i just even if it wasn't port i ate this you know just to live a couple of years longer no we, we ain't doing that yeah and that's another good point because just to live a couple of years longer like it tells you in Ezekiel, if you if you live a righteous life and you you give up at the very end, all your righteousness will be forgotten. So, you know, he, he obviously had read Ezekiel. He was a righteous man. But the idea that you would sell your soul to Esau for an ag agreement with a man who's never kept the promise in his life, he broke over 400 treaties with Gad and Reuben. Why would you make a deal with someone who could just kill you anyway? Here it is. You're, you're selling your soul to prolong your life with a man who, who's just going to kill you as soon as you sell your soul anyway. It doesn't make any sense. It wasn't saying that Isaiah 29 with them making that covenant with death, with death. it's going to be disannulled and they're going to be swept away in that flood, in that hail. God. I wanted to get this real back real quick before God, we go back to it. Peter. This is uh, St. Luke chapter 10, verse 23. It says, and he turned to him and he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, this is in red letters, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. And that was your, how was Shai speaking to his disciples, saying, What? You're blessed to see, you know, the Son of Man, the Messiah, come on the scene. But we know, as it says in Romans 15, everything written aforetime was written for our learning. He was also speaking to his disciples today. Huh. Blessed are you to see the second coming of the son of man you know to see these prophecies that our forefathers knew would lead up to the kingdom of heaven being established what's it saying acts one is now is now the time that the kingdom shall be established you know over two thousand years ago they were ready for it to come 
how much more now when we are at the door of it like as 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 the apostle as apostle tahara said hey we we are getting to the point where we're months away from the kingdom of heaven you know six months 12 months 24 months it ain't in decades anymore Damn. it's in months Damn. and i'll be right to size you know sooner than later because really man this the longer we're here the more we're defiled and it's just we like like we said earlier the best part about all of this destruction is that righteousness is going to follow you cannot have righteousness here jake can't he can't wrap his his brain around the idea that the so-called white man is coming out of power so he he has this idea that look if we just vote more if we just pull together our money if we circulate the black dollar if we can fix black love all of these fake solutions it's like putting it's like putting a band-aid on a on a cut that you know somebody's head was sawed open his brain is spilling out and then you put a band-aid on it like look we can we could fix him we could save him like no man they, we would have healed babylon but she's not healed you can't fix this it's yeah. like putting a band-aid on that on somebody that got hit with that gun and saving private ryan yeah that <laughs> <laughs> yo that that's coming to america man those those machines they're here all right esau's got them then you got the these uh these foreign troops that learn Spanish? <laughs> oh, that's a Venezuelan. Nah, that's an Iranian, man. That, just, just, just you wait. All right. You got them gooks <laughs> over here. Yeah. Them Hamites. Yep. That all hate you, Jakes. Yep. Hey, uh, I, I'll never forget this. That uh, the elder, elder Malcolm uh, up in Chicago said one of the brothers in his camp. He, this was probably like back in the. It was. It was a, probably around like you know eight, ten years ago. He said one of those brothers got a random call. And this goes to show that, you know, the powers that be know who we are, you know, these soldiers too, they got us, you know, all our information out there and they know who to come for. Uh, he said he got a call by, so they sounded Chinese. He's like, oh, we are happy. We're going to be happy to come to America and kill niggas on the street. Like he got a call like that. Yeah, that's, that's what's coming. And a lot of them are already here. World War Three is... is it's going to be, little the scriptures tell you, it's going to be like any other time since there has been a nation. It's not going to be something that you you, uh, you so-called Americans could just turn on the TV and, oh, look what's happening on the other side of the world. Look at those children in Yemen being bombed. Oh, I'll, I'll get my credit card and send them $5 and feel like a good person. No, it's going to be right outside. It's going to be right in your front door. World War Three is going to be up close and personal to you degenerates here in America. And nobody nobody's coming to save you you Americans, you American Jakes, you American Edomites. Everybody hates y'all as it is. They got that one saying. It was some I think he was a Catholic priest Edomite back in during, you know, the Nazis and shit. Mm -hmm. And he said when they came for when they came for the the small hats, I said nothing. Yeah. When they came for the gypsies, I said nothing. When they came for the Moes, I said nothing. And when they finally came for me, there was nobody to say anything for me. Uh. That's, that's what's happening, man. All you nations that have just turned a blind eye to the wickedness that's been going on in this society. You you know the whole, the whole time this country existed, how it's treated so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And you said nothing because you're heathen. All right? you're, you're our enemies going back to Psalms, the 83rd chapter. So now that you weren't having anything to say about us, guess what? It's your turn now. We're not going to help you. The Israelites are not going to come form Voltron and help uh, Ham and <laughs> Amalek. You know, it's time for y'all to get your judgment. Hey, we're laughing right now seeing you heathens butcher each other. Yeah. And how much how much more when it's finally here in America, when we get to see these people that are constantly fucking with us, scoffing, just treating treating the most precious thing on the earth as a joke to see you finally, you know, get your just desserts. Yeah, because if you're not in this truth, you're a scoffer, ultimately. If you if you if you're not helping the prophets in any way, shape, or form, in the back of your mind you're like, Man, look at them crazy niggas. I'm stupid they believe in the bible the bible is this the bible is, oh i believe in science they still believe in that like all of these people with, they, with they, this on yeah with a mask with and a, with a diaper on their face and with a some juice in you yeah <laughs> you, you people deserve everything that's coming to you but this is back in uh second peter three it says knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust keep going and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation that as as we were going into earlier with the brother that did that video the the jake said but real talk we're living in biblical times and you had some jakes you know talking about jesus and you know get right and stuff and then you had a lot of jakes say hey we've been hearing this since our grandparents or what 
oh, there's always been earthquakes. There's always been wars. Yeah. There's always been in floods and signs in the heavens, all that shit. This is that prophecy for you. You think that this is going to be no different and things are going to go back to normal. But, you know, if you were actually paying attention, unprecedented things are happening in these times. Things that have, you know, never happened before. Just, we, we're on the brink. We've got major nations on their mainstream media threatening to use nukes on each other. We're talking about going to a cashless digital society, talking about the Karagma, you know, the, uh, what did, what did Cla uh, K. Tissue Schwab say? We're coming into the time of the poly crisis. We're coming into the time <laughs> of, of, of great anger out there. Yeah. Just the level of technology that this devil has, the amount of destruction that he's able to reap, is not, that, that's never been seen before on the earth. All right, the, the technology that he has to kill people is is completely unlike anything the earth has ever seen. So this idea that, oh, there's always been wars. No, there's, there's not always been a time where multiple nations can wipe each other off the face of the earth. All right, they, the fact that there was multiple wars in, in the 1800s, okay, you couldn't push a button and kill 10 million people in the 1800s. So these jigs that are just, oh, that's, that's happened already. You, you people are just ready to die, man. And like the brother mentioned, the cashless society. There's, there's never been. Esau never had the technology to put a, a small device in someone's hand and just completely do away with cash. That's a new invention on the earth. The, the credit card itself, you have to have a whole infrastructure to have uh, the, the visa, just visa alone. If you get rid of Mastercard, Discover, all the other cards, just one credit card alone. If 10 million people are making hundreds of transactions a day, you have to have an infrastructure for that to take place. And with, with cashless societies, you have to have a grid set up, you have to have the blockchain, you have to have multiple servers that are using nanotechnology. These things didn't exist before. So yes, people have been talking about the, the MOTB for years, but the actual technology to, to make it mandatory for every man, small and great on the earth, that's, a, that's not a new thing. That's something that only exists right now. We're in those times right now, the times we've been preaching about. But it says, uh, for this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the Most High, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Reread again, Bible Kishah. It says, For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of the Most High, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Keep going. Right, which goes into, you know, of course, the earth being made out of water, and then the, the outer heavens is another layer of water, man. The, the Shemayim. Mm -hmm. It says, Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. And what was that talking about? The first death by water, that great flood during the days of Noah. And what it say in verse 5? For this they willingly are ignorant of. Back then, Noah was prophesying for a hundred years, building that ark. And what they... Oh, he's crazy. What are you doing? It's never rained before. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing they said. It's never rained before back then because back then it was a mist, a dew that came up. You know in the morning and, and yeah. watered the plants so rain oh rain has never come what are you talking about water coming from the sky yeah, no it was crazy you were seen as a just a the same way they look at us is how they looked at noah like what is the guy talking about why is he building a big ass boat something's wrong with him no nation they would destroy themselves if they use nukes yeah. there's no way that they would they would shoot nukes at each other like that are you crazy yeah there's no way the so-called white man would kill millions of people it's not like he hasn't done it multiple times Right, it's called World War III for a reason. He's already done it twice, but now he has his destructive capability has has exploded exponentially. He he can now push a button and just make a city disappear. And he's not going to do it because why? Because he's such a good person. Because he has such a track record of caring about the sanctity of human life. This is the so-called white man we're talking about. This is the man who pushes abortion. This is the man who who pushes uh, might is right. All right, if I'm stronger than you, if I, if I can bully you, then whatever I write in the law, you, you have to follow it. That's correct. I'm Yeah, if I if you can't do anything about it, then that means you're wrong. Yeah. And I was trying to find that quote. It was by one Edomite who was who was well known in funding Osama bin Laden during, you know, the Soviet Afghan war, which was something he saw, you know, these American Edomites orchestrated. Yeah. But he said the goal of rulers throughout history has been what? Instead of killing many people with a lot of weapons not that but to kill many people with a few weapons backing up what you were saying 
Now they've got technology, which at the push of the button, they don't even really need to send out an army like that to kill a bunch of people. They can just hit you with missiles and drones and do do uh, double the work with, with half the effort. Yeah. And you know America's all about that. These these American troops are not ready for any type of hand-to-hand hand -hand combat one-on-one -on -one with Russian soldiers. Are you crazy? The, half the military is women, sodomites, weirdos, just fats. Got kids that can't even do push-ups and pull-ups. But just... America's not trying to go to war with Russia and China with with uh, antiquated weapons. They're going to take. I was going to tell you, it tells you in Isaiah six, this war shall be fought with fuel of fire and burning. And just to back you up, when you ask most people in the military why they join, it's not because I want to fight. I want to fight for the country and the constitution. No, because I want to, you know, get money to go to college. Benefits. While these people in China and Russia, you know, they're patriotic and join the military to handle business, yeah, these, to forward their empire. Yeah, these, these countries actually have a culture. American culture is nothing but degeneracy, porn, video games, smut, just weirdness, man. These, these other countries that America is enemies with, they actually have a culture that they love. Their sons actually want to protect their families and their values. America, there's, there's no value to protect here. There's nothing, even these so-called right-wing conservatives that, that care about America, let's make America great again. Woo -woo. When was America great? What values did America have in its heyday? Killing niggas, man. Just being a degenerate. Uh, there's nothing to save here, all right? This place has to be destroyed. And if you haven't come to that conclusion yet, you're part of the destruction. Okay. But it says, for, uh, yeah, verse 6, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished the flood, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But the world that is now, the heavens and the earth that are now reserved unto fire to the perdition or the destruction of ungodly men, that second death, that nuclear destruction, you know, that ultimate cleansing agent, which is going to be the final period on this age of wickedness we're living in. That fire is gonna wipe it away, and then you know, after the dust settles, that's when Yahweh Shai and those hundred and forty-four thousand hunters are gonna begin establishing righteousness through that rod of iron. God. It says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So literally a thousand year period is as a day, a, the day you had today. And the days are getting shorter now. Okay. So just imagine that whatever time you wake up to whatever time you go to bed, that's a day, that's a thousand, that's a, a day to that. A thou, imagine a thousand years in that one day, that's a day of the Lord. So we can c easily see why it says, though they tarry, wait for it, but they shall surely come, they will not tarry. In the heavens, these things aren't tarrying yeah. because the Most High lives outside of time. So it's just like that. It's just in these, these grasshopper lives we live, yeah. you know, you know, how you know we live we have a time schedule on things you know you get old your body breaks down you go through decades of you know work and you know you know going through shit break heartache and stuff like that it just seems like forever but these things have been in motion and quickly coming into motion and now we're at the you know the fulfillment of it and yeah, you know what else that means it's only been two days since you executed the lord's son okay if someone murdered your son two days ago you would you be over it it's been less than half a day since the transatlantic slave trade. You took the Lord's children, you packed them on boats, you whipped them, you beat them, you, you raped them, you did all these horrible things. That's less than, than half a day. It's like Lord. a nine to five job. Yeah. That's, that's noon. Like, oh man, at lunch, they, they kidnapped my kid. Like, you Edomites have no idea what you've done and who you've done it to. You you actually you crucified the son of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and then you, you tortured and destroyed his sons, man, the rest of his sons. So this is less than a day of, of man, you y'all got it coming, man. And hey, time's gonna go back to normal during that thousand years. Time it says you're down. gonna receive double. Hey, the time might feel like it's going double slow, just yeah. so you can get every morsel, every every bit of blood, sweat, and tears out of you Edomites. Yeah, they they're gonna be serving slavery for a thousand years, but it's gonna feel like like a lot longer than a thousand years. You you're gonna like you said, we're gonna get every single ounce of blood out of you Edomites, man. But it says, Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And, you know, a lot of the times, you know, things, 
you know go at this pace so what the elect can wake up yeah every every member of the elect has their season to wake up but as we get as these things speed up what should that tell you that the elect if they haven't already all been sealed hey they're damn near close to it God. and the lord is not slack concerning his promises but hey he's not slack concerning his promises and he's not slack concerning his prophecies again though it tarry wait for it for it shall surely adam 22 <laughs> it shall this fucking degenerate ruling over us it is not slack hey these prophecies are quickly quickly coming to their fulfillment yeah. 20 look at what's happened in 2023 all the groundwork has been set for just that one little powder keg to just fast track the MOTB, World War Three, you know, Yahweh Shai's second coming, and the Kingdom of Heaven starting. Yeah, all the dominoes are in place. It just takes that one, the first domino, and that's it. And it's beautiful that it happened like this. You know, the Lord could have set it up any kind of way, but he had it so that I'm going to wake up the, the children of Israel, Ezekiel 37 is going to happen the same time World War III is happening, the same time the MOTB has been put into place, the same time, you know, all these prophecies are happening at the same time. So it's like, there's no way that you can mistake what's going on right now. These people in the comment board talking about, oh, y'all been saying that, y'all been, there, there's never been a time on the earth where all these end time biblical prophecies were all happening at the exact same time. We're, this, this can only be talking about right now. And it, it only makes sense because if this world were to continue, there would be no flesh to be saved. This has to be the end, just for that reason alone. The so-called white man can't be in power another 20 years. There wouldn't be any people left, all right? We'd have 800 genders. We'd have people marrying AI robots. There wouldn't be any natural procreation. All of the food would have patents. You wouldn't be allowed to grow anything. Like who, how's the world gonna take another 20 years of the so-called white man's leadership? It's impossible, it says, uh, but the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Hey, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Hey, when they say peace and safety, then sudden, then sudden destruction like a thief. Hey, and you got Biden, Biden and these other people. We clearly see the economy is about to, you know, take a bullet to the head. Kinda. But they're like, oh, well, I even hear it on, you know, NPR on the radio or on, you know, the mainstream. Oh, well, it looks like, you know, recession, uh, the signs for recession and uh, inflation have slowed down. And they've actually added a bunch of jobs to the economy. Oh, things are going to get better. But meanwhile, you got people working multiple jobs, people one paycheck away from being evicted, yeah. you know, just theft theft and crime at a high to all-time high because people just can't afford this this cost of living world war three around the corner all that okay it says and then it goes into what the elements melting with fervent heat and the works in the earth being burned up that final period point those nuclear tipped icbms being shot to the ends of the earth which is uh russia just put the satan to which is one of their big boy missiles yeah. onto a into active military service and i'm trying to remember they said the type of fuel it uses it uses a liquid fuel it's a liquid fuel based nuclear weapon instead of solid fuel and they say that liquid fuel means that this weapon is specifically used as a first strike weapon hmm. this isn't a oh we get hit and then we retaliate this weapon is specifically designed to know we're going to hit first yeah. and this is on active military duty yeah that's what's coming and jake jake's still playing games it says seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness seeing all these prophecies that that our forefathers many great men and kings have been waiting for are at the door what manner of persons ought you to be it's about to say looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of Yahweh. looking for and hastening you should be in the spirit of, hey, this should have happened yesterday. This should have happened an hour ago. I'm ready for, you know, all hell to break loose in the next hour. Hey, uh, hastening, hastening for the day and, and dil diligently waiting for it. God. It says, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That nuclear destruction. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness a that hope that hope which we have through what this knowledge wisdom and understanding which is going to be our stability during jacob's trouble 
that way we know that whatever our lot is, whether we make it all the way through or whether we're martyrs for this truth, as long as we know, stand to keep our integrity and have hope in Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, we're going to be the first fruit seeing that new heaven and that new, that refreshed earth, the kingdom of heaven being established, righteousness being established. But uh, let me think. Probably uh, you know, just get that Isaiah 55 and Isaiah 34 and if you have anything else. Come on, come on. There's uh, Isaiah 55 starting at. Uh, we'll just read 11. Okay. And hey, this is this is what brings us our hope, and what allows us to you know keep stable this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that everything that has been prophesied in these scriptures will take place. Hey, Israel waking up, these prophecies being fulfilled, Yahweh Shai making his second coming, and the kingdom of heaven, the new heavens and the new earth, earth, and our eternal rest and eternal righteousness dwelling will take place. And nothing can happen to stop it, stop these prophecies from coming to their fulfillment. Huh. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Point blank period. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, which uh, the prophets of the mouthpiece of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. It shall accomplish that which I please. And uh, it shall not return unto me void. So point blank period. Every single one of these prophecies will take place. And there's no more speculating anymore. Whether we, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? We are literally seeing it take place in the mainstream news. It's happening so much now that they can't even hide it anymore. Yeah. They can't hide the chariots anymore. Yeah. They have to admit that so-called UFOs exist. That we've been knowing about them for decades. And we're coming up with a space force to, you know, try to fight against it. Good luck with that. Exactly. So this is uh, Isaiah 36. 34 verse uh, 16. Okay, okay, okay. Unless you wanted to... Yeah, I just want to say oh, real quick. Because okay, okay. um, it, it's another good good point about that Isaiah 55 is that the pro the faith in the prophecies happening and the faith that the Lord's word is not going to go out void, that's another difference between the men of the Lord and all these other people that claim to believe in the Bible, so-called Christians, so-called Muslims. These people, when you go into all these religions... They believe that the prophecies are going to be void. All, all those prophecies about the Israelites ruling over the heathen, that, that's, that's not going to happen anymore because of Jesus. Oh, we, we got to keep the commandments? No, that, that's not talking about that. These people don't actually believe in the, the infallibility of the word of the Lord. They, they think that the Lord said a bunch of things and made a bunch of promises, but now, oh, that's in the past. We don't have to deal with that anymore. They're, they're going to find out the hard way. But this is uh, Isaiah 34 and, uh, and 16. It says, Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read, no one of these shall fail. And what's the book of Yahweh? You know, the so-called Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, as well as the Apocrypha, which is a part of the Old Testament. And read, no one of these shall fail. No one of what shall fail? These prophecies. Hey, the prophecies in the past didn't fail. What? The he goat, you know, yeah. the Grecians going against the ram, you know, the, the Persians, you know, that didn't fail. Yeah, and that's that's heavy, right? because in, any time a kingdom is in power, it seems like they're never going to come out of power. For you to say that the Greeks would take down the Persian Empire, now it's obvious. It, it happened. You know, what, what 25, 2700, like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, however many years ago. To say now, obviously, the, the Greek Empire took down the Persians, but at the time of the Persian Empire, to say that the, the so-called white man is going to come into power, that people look at you like you're crazy. Or they say hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. And when that they even told Alexander back then that you want to go against the Persian Empire? Are you a madman? Yeah. Is this this is blasphemy? This is madness. This is farted. But see, he, he believed in the prophecy. He believed that he was set up to destroy the Persian Empire, which he was. So if a heathen can have that much faith in the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, how much his sons? And how did he believe? He had enough faith to believe in, you know, the high priest at the time, Jadua. Brothers in our camp, we just went through the history lesson. Yeah. Alexander had the, had the high priest at that time show him in the prophecy that, look, you're going to take down the Persians. And he had such high, a heathen, a Edomite, had a such heathen. high faith in that, that he went... And handled the will of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai because yeah. he was a tool of of the Lord. Yeah, but you got actual Israelites that are like, oh, that book, that's a religious book, that's a fairy tale. That's the, that's the white man's that's book. That's the white man's book. 
bugged out, man. <laughs> hey, but the, the children of uh, of darkness are wiser than the children of light, man. Hey, point blank, period. But yeah, it says, uh, not one of these shall fail. It says, none shall want her mate for my mouth. For my mouth it had commanded, and his spirit it had gathered them. None shall want her mate. Nothing else can compare to these scriptures. No other, you know, religious doctrine, the, the Holy Quran, that, you know, <laughs> Hali Selassie. Hali Sel especially that fucking, that, 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 uh, that, that, uh, porta potty. Yeah. Hali Selassie, you know, the scientific method, the theory of evolution, the U.S. Constitution. Yaku. Yaku. Hey, let's not get into Yakub. None of that could compare to the 144% accuracy of the scriptures. If you want to know what happened in the past, the scriptures have it. If you want to know what times are going into at the present, the scriptures have it. If you want to know what's about to happen, hey, the scriptures have it. Huh. None shall want her mate, for my mouth that hath commanded, and his spirit that hath gathered them. Point blank, period. Hey, everything that's been prophesied in the scriptures will take place. And we are in the times when they are no longer tearing and we are at the door of all hell breaking loose. But what? Salvation as well. And everything we've been striving for and having hope in. The new heavens and the new earth. The kingdom of heaven being established. God, yeah, there's, no, there's no salvation without destruction. And we're in the time of both. Kind. Any other points? Okay, so with that, we hope you sincere Akiam and Akwath were edified by this lesson. And again, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah, Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you sincere Akiam and Akwath out there. Hey, just keep doing what you're doing. Hey, to, you know, strive to endure, you know, all... I brought the Zai, we all be of that elect number. Hey, Shalom. Shalom.